Hello, in this lecture we will find out the area of the green triangle. In the drawing we have square ABCD. We know that one side of square ABCD AD equals to BC equals to DC equals to 4 units and uh, inside this square we have this circle, the radius of this circle equals to 1 unit and we want to, to find out the area of this green triangle so first, first of all I will present to you a new rule, rule number one. According to rule number A tangent to a circle is perpendicular to the radius. drawn to its point of tendency so I will read all number one again according to all number one A tangent to a circle is perpendicular to the radius drawn to its point of tendency. So what is the meaning of rule number one? The meaning of rule number one is that if we have this circle The center of this circle is at this point. We define the center of the circle as point O. And we have tangent AB. This is tangent AB. Tangent AB is tangent to this circle at this point. This is the point of tendency. We define the point of tendency as, as point M. Point M is the point of tendency. Of tangent AB with this circle, we will connect together points O and M by a straight line. OM is the radius of this circle because of the fact that it starts from the center of the circle and ends at point M that is a point of the circle itself. Therefore, OM is the radius of this circle. So actually, as you can see from the drawing, the radius OM, it is drawn to the point of tendency, that is to say, it is drawn to point M, that is the point of tendency of tangent AB with this circle. Therefore, according to rule number one, 
a tangent to a circle is perpendicular to the radius drawn to its point of tendency. So whenever you have a radius, like in this drawing, that is drawn to the point of tendency, then the tangent will be perpendicular to this radius. That is to say this angle will be equal to 90 degrees and this angle will be also equal to 90 degrees. Okay, so a tangent to a circle, that is to say tangent AB is perpendicular to the radius drawn to its point of tendency. So whenever you have a radius, like in this drawing, the radius OM, it is drawn to the point of tendency, therefore the tangent AB will be perpendicular to this radius, that is to say this angle equals to 90 degrees and this angle also equals to 90 degrees. Okay, so we will implement all number one in our drawing. We will define the center of this circle as point O. And we will define the point of tendency of tangent AD with this circle as point M. OM or MO is the radius of this circle that equals to one unit. It is given as the question. So as you can see in the drawing we have this radius. The radius OM it is drawn to the point of tendency. That is to say it is drawn to point M that is the point of tendency of tangent AD with this circle. Therefore the tangent AD will be perpendicular to this radius. That is to say, this angle will be equal to 90 degrees, and this angle will be also equal to 90 degrees. Okay? And we also know that all the angles inside the square are right angles, so this angle, that is 1 out of 4 angles inside square ABCD, will be equal to 90 degrees. We will define the point of tendency of tangent AB with this circle, this point is point N. So actually point N is the point of tendency of tangent AB with this circle. We will join points O and N by a straight line. O N is the radius of this circle because of the fact that line o, segment ON starts from the center of the circle, that is to say from point O and ends at point N, that is the point on the circle itself, therefore ON is the radius of this circle, that is to say it equals to one unit, according to what is given us in the question. So as you can see, we have this radius, the radius ON, it is drawn to the point of tendency, that is to say it is drawn to point N, that is the point of tendency of tangent AB with this circle. Therefore, according to rule number one, the tangent AB will be perpendicular to this radius. That is to say, this angle will be equal to 90 degrees, and this angle will be also equal to 90 degrees. Okay? We, de we will define the point of tendency of tangent CE with this circle is point K. Then we will join points K and O by a straight line. OK, the line segment OK is the radius of this circle because of the fact that it starts from the center of the circle and ends at point K, that is the point on the circle itself, therefore OK is the radius of this circle, that is to say it equals to one unit. And again we have the radius OK, it is drawn to the point of tendency, that is to say it is drawn to point K, that is the point of tendency of tangent CE with this circle, therefore according to rule number one, whenever you have a radius that is drawn to the point of tendency, then the tangent CE will be perpendicular to this radius. That is to say, 
this angle will be equal to 90 degrees and this angle will be also equal to 90 degrees. Okay? So, in the next step, I will present to you a new rule, rule number two. According to rule number two, The sum of the angles in any quadrilateral is equal to 360 degrees. So I will read rule number two again. According to rule number two, the sum of the angles in any quadrilateral is equal to 360 degrees. So actually, if you focus in the small quadrilateral, quadrilateral MOAN, then according to rule number two, the sum of its angles, the sum of these quadrilateral angles must be equal to 360 degrees. So in quadrilateral MOAN, the sum of the angles must be equal to 360 degrees according to rule number 2. So which angles we have inside quadrilateral MOAN? We have three right angles, one, two, three, and the sum of three right angles is equal to 90 times 3 is 270 degrees plus the size of this angle that is actually angle X in total, the sum of those uh, four angles must be equal to 360 degrees according to rule number two. So I will repeat again. The sum of the angles inside quadrilateral MOAN must be equal to 360 degrees according to rule number two that the sum of the angles in any quadrilateral is equal to 360 degrees. So which angles we have inside quadrilateral MOAN? We have three right angles that the sum of them is 270 degrees plus the size of the fourth angle that we define the angle X must be equal to 360 degrees. Here we will subtract 270 degrees from this equality and we will get that angle X equals to 360 degrees minus 270 degrees is equal to 90 degrees. So we found out that angle X is a right angle, it equals to 90 degrees. So we will substitute this angle, angle X, by a right angle so as you can see we have four right angles inside quadrilateral MOAN okay And I will present to you, I will present to you a new rule, rule number three. According to rule number three,
if a quadrilateral has four right angles, then it must be at least a rectangle if not a square. So if not a square it must be a rectangle. So I will read all number three again. According to all number three if a quadrilateral has four right angles then it must be at least a rectangle if not a square. And we found out that quadrilateral MOAN, this quadrilateral MOAN has four right angles, therefore quadrilateral MOAN is a rectangle according to rule number three. So I will write it down. Quadrilateral MOAN is a rectangle according to rule number three. Okay. I repeat again. This small quadrilateral quadrilateral M O A N is a rectangle according to rule number three because of the fact that it has four right angles. So we have also rule number four. According to rule number four, the opposite sides of a rectangle are equal to each other. I will read rule number four again. According to rule number four, the opposite sides of a rectangle are equal to each other. So, actually, according to rule number four, the opposite sides of rectangle MOAN, this rectangle, they are equal to each other. That is to say, so if we relate to rectangle MOAN, then according to rule number four, its opposite sides are equal to each other. That is to say, MO equals to AN. MO equals to AN according to rule number four. Again, MO is equal to AN. It left again MO AN according to rule number four. Okay. But we know that MO equals to one unit. It is given us the question that MO equals to one unit. So we can write here that MO equals to one unit and from this equality we will conclude that AN also equals to one unit. 
Okay, a n equals to m o equals to one. Therefore, a n also equals to one unit. So we can write down that a n equals to one unit. Here, a n. Side a n of rectangle m o a n equals to one unit. Likewise, we will also conclude from rule number four that m a equals to o n. M a equals to o n. According to rule number four, of course, M A equals to O N. But we have already found out that O N equals to one unit. So we can write down that O N equals to one unit. O N equals to one unit. Here O N equals to one unit according to what we have already found. So from this equality, we will conclude that MA also equals to one unit. Okay? MA also equals to one unit. MA equals to one unit. So we can write here that you can write here that M A equals to one unit. So actually we found out that all four sides of rectangle M O A N they are all equal to one unit, therefore they are equal to each other. And we also found out that all four angles inside Left again M O A N are right angles. So in the next step I will present to you a new rule, rule number five. According to rule number five, If a quadrilateral has four right angles and also four equal sides then it is a square okay I will repeat on rule number five again according to rule number five If a quadrilateral has four right angles and also four equal sides, I'll repeat again. If a quadrilateral has four right angles and also four equal sides, then it is a rectangle. Okay? So and we have already found out that quadrilateral M O A N, this quadrilateral, has four right angles and also four equal sides. Therefore, according to rule number five, quadrilateral M O A N is a square. We will conclude from rule number five that quadrilateral M O A N is a square.
I will repeat again. We will conclude from rule number 5, this quadrilateral MOAN, this quadrilateral is a square because of the fact that it has four right angles and also four equal sides. Okay? This quadrilateral is a square. And we also have rule number 6. According to rule number 6, The diagonals of a square bisect the angles of the square into 45 degrees angles so I will read rule number 6 again according to rule number 6 The diagonals of a square bisect the angle of the, the angles of a square into 45 degrees angles. Okay, so according to rule number six, if we focus on square M O A N, again if you focus on square M O A N, then according to rule Number six, the diagonal OA the diagonal OA bisects this angle that is actually a right angle into two angles of forty five degrees. That is to say this angle will be equal to 45 degrees and this angle also will be equal to 45 degrees according to rule number 6 or this angle that is actually angle OAN equals to 45 degrees according to rule number 6 so because of the fact that point N is located on side AB, we can call to this angle that is actually angle of 45 degrees, angle OAB. It doesn't matter at all if we call to this angle that is equal to 45 degrees, angle OAN or angle OAB. Anyway, it will remain 45 degrees. Why? Because point N is located on side AB of the square. So all three points A, N, and A, N, and B are located on the same straight line. Therefore we can relate to this angle that equals to 45 degrees as angle O, A, B. So I will write it down. So according to rule number 6, Angle if we relate to square in square M O A N 
if you relate to the small square, square M O A N, then angle O A B equals to 45 degrees. Again, angle Angle OAB equals to 45 degrees according to rule number 6 that uh, states that the diagonal of a square bisects the angle of the square into 45 degrees angles. So this diagonal, diagonal OA bisects angle, this angle that is a right angle into two angles that each of them is is equal to 45 degrees, that is to say angle OAB equals to 45 degrees according to rule number 6. Likewise, if we relate to the big square to square ABCD, in square ABCD, if we relate to the big square, square ABCD, then according to rule number 6, the diagonal CA bisects the same angle into two angles of 45 degrees. So I will draw the diagonal CA. So this is actually diagonal CA of square ABCD and according to rule number 6 the diagonal CA bisects this angle, this, two, this angle that is a right angle into two angles that each of them is equal to 45 degrees. That is to say angle CAB equals to 45 degrees according to rule number 6. Okay, angle CAB equals to 45 degrees according to rule number 6. Okay, I'll repeat again. If we relate to square ABCD, then according to rule number 6, the diagonal CA bisects this angle that is a right angle into two equal angles that each of them is equal to 45 degrees, this angle equal to 45 degrees, that is to say angle CAB, this angle CAB equals to 45 degrees according to rule number 6. Angle CAB equals to 45 degrees according to rule number 6 and we have already found out that angle OAB also equals to 45 degrees according to rule number 6. Angle OAB equals to 45 degrees according to rule number 6. So angle OAB and the angle CAB are both equal to 45 degrees, therefore they are equal to each other. So angle OAB equals to angle CAB because of the fact that they are both equal to 45 degrees. Okay, both angles are equal to 45 degrees, and therefore angle OAB equals to angle CAB. And from the fact that angle OAB is equal to angle CAB, we will conclude that the diagonal CA of square ABCD passes for point O. Okay, we will conclude that the diagonal CA of square ABCD passes from point O. I write, it, I write down the conclusion. We will conclude that the diagonal CA of square ABCD passes 
4.4.0. I'll read again the conclusion. So, from the fact that angle OAB equals to angle CAB, from the fact that angle OAB equals to angle CAB, we will conclude that the diagonal CA passes, the diagonal CA of square ABCD passes for point O. Okay? This diagonal. This diagonal, diagonal CA passes for point O. Actually, it is very logic that uh, diagonal CA passes for point O. Otherwise, if we assume that the diagonal CA doesn't pass for point O, then angle CAB will never be equal to angle OAB. But because of the fact that angle CAB is equal to angle OAB, we will conclude that the diagonal CA of square ABCD passes for point O. Okay? In the next step, I will present to you a new rule, rule number 7. According to rule number seven, the length, the length of a diagonal. of a square is equal to square root of 2 multiplied by the length of the squares side. So I repeat again on all number seven. According to rule number seven, the length of a diagonal of a square is equal to square root of two multiplied by the length of the square's side. So what is the meaning of rule number seven? The meaning of rule number seven is that if we have a square, a square A, B, C, D. So this is square A, B, C, D. And we, and, uh, and we know that the length of one side of square A, B, C, D equals to S units. And we also know that all the length, all the sides of uh, the square are equal to each other. So if the length of side A, B equals to S units, then 
the length of the other side will be also equal to S units. So BD equals to S units in its length, and CD also equals to S units in, in its length. Then for and CA also equals to S units in its length. Then if we know that the length of square, uh, the length of one side of square ABCD equals to S units, then the length of its diagonals, that is to say diagonal BC, diagonal BC and diagonal AD, will be equal to S square root 2 of times square root of 2 times s units. So if the length of one side of square ABCD is s units, then the length of its diagonal will be equal to square root of 2 times s units. Okay? This is the meaning of rule number 7. If the length of one side of square ABCD equals to s units, then the length of the diagonal of square ABCD will be equal to square root of 2 times S units. Okay, so we can actually implement rule number 7 in our drawing. In our drawing, we have a diagonal OA of square OMAN. And according to rule number seven, the length of diagonal OA will be equal to the length of one side of square OMAM, that is actually one, times square root of two units. So the length of diagonal OA in square MOAN. The length of diagonal OA in the small square, square MOAN, will be equal to the length of one side of square MOAN, that is one unit, times square root of two. One times square root of two is square root of two. So we found out that the length of diagonal OA it is actually equal to square root of two units. So we can write here that the length of diagonal OA equals to square root of 2 units. And likewise, we will calculate the length of diagonal CA of square ABCD. So in square ABCD, The length of diagonal CA, according to rule number 7, will be equal to the length of one side of the square ABCD that is actually equal to 4 units, times square root of 2. So we found out, in conclusion, that the length of the big the, the, uh, the, the length of diagonal CA of, uh, of square ABCD equals to 4 times square root of 2 units and the length of diagonal OA in the small square is equal to square root of 2 units. According to rule number 7 of course, in the next step we will calculate the value of CO. The length of CO from the drawing, you can see that line segment CO equals to CA minus OA. Again, CO equals to CA minus OA. I will repeat again. C, uh, CO, line segment CO equals to CA minus OA. But we have already found out that CA equals to 4 times square root of 2 units, 
and OA equals to square root of two units. So in conclusion, we actually found out that CO equals to four times square root of two units minus one times square root of two units, that is to say, it equals to three times square root of two units. So CO equals to three times square root of two units. So we can write here, that CO, this line segment, equals to three times square root of two units. Okay? So, in the next step, we will focus on the right triangle, triangle COK, or on the blue right triangle, triangle COK. So in the blue right triangle, triangle C OK, according to the Pythagoras theorem, in any right triangle, the square of the hypotenuse equals to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars. And the hypotenuse in the blue right triangle, triangle COK, is actually CO because it is located in front of the right angle. So CO is the hypotenuse, therefore the, the square of the hypotenuse is CO square, and it equals to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars according to the Pythagoras theorem, that is to say it equals to OK square plus CK square. So, I will repeat again. In the right triangle, triangle COK, according to the Pythagoras theorem, the square of the hypotenuse equals to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars. That is to say, CO square equals to OK square plus CK square. And uh, we have already found out that CO equals to 3 times square root of 2 units. So CO square will be equal to 3 times square root of 2 square. And it equals to OK. OK equals to 1 unit. This is the radius of the circle. It equals to 1 unit. So OK square is 1 square. 1 square is 1 plus CK square. CK is the missing variable, so we will leave it as it is. So in conclusion, we found out that 3 times square root of 2 square equals to 1 plus CK square. 3 times square root of 2 square is it, actually 3 square is 9 and square root of 2 square is 2. So, in conclusion, 3 times square root of 2 square is 9 times 2. So, 9 times 2 equals to 1 plus CK square. Here, 9 times 2 is 18, so I'll write it down. 
So 18 equals to 1 plus ck squared. Here we will subtract 1 from this equation, equation number 1, and we will get that 18 minus 1 is 17. So we will get that 17 equals to ck squared. So here we will take a root out of this equation, equation number 1, and we will get that ck equals to square root of 17 units. So we found out that ck equals to square root of 17 units. Here, ck equals to square root of 17 units. Okay. In the next step, I will present to you a new rule, the last rule, rule number 8, according to rule number 8, the lengths of two tangents from a common external point to a second are equal. I repeat on rule number 8 again, according to rule number 8. The lengths of two tangents from a common external point to a circle are equal. So what is the meaning of rule number 8? The meaning of rule number 8 is that if we have this circle, And we have also this point, point P. Point P is actually a, a, an external point. Why point P is an external point in relation to this circle? Because of the fact that point P is not located inside this circle, nor on this circle, but it is located outside this circle. Therefore, it is defined as external point in relation to this circle. So, if from point P we will draw two tangents to this circle, the first tangent will be this tangent. We will define the point of tangency of the first tangent with this circle is point A and we will draw the second tangent to this circle from point P from point P and we will define the point of tendency of the second tangent with this circle is point B and according to rule number 8 the lengths of two tangents that is to say PA and PB from a common external point. The common external point is point P. The length of those two tangents PA and PB are equal. The lengths of two tangents from a common external point to a circle are equal. That is to say PA is the length of the first second. 
PA is the, is the length of the first tangent, PB is the length of the second tangent, and according to rule number 8, the lengths of those two ten tangents are equal to each other. That is to say, PA equals to PB. So, according to rule number 8, whenever you draw from a common of 7.2 tangents to, to the circle, to a circle, then the lengths of those two tangents will be equal to each other. That is to say, PA equals to PB. Okay, and we can actually implement rule number 8 in our drawing, because in our drawing we have the external point, point E. Point E is an external point of this circle, and from point E we have two tangents to this circle. The first tangent is tangent EN, and the second tangent is tangent EK, and according to rule number 8, the length, the lengths of those two tangents are equal to each other. That is to say, EN equals to EK according to rule number 8. Okay, EN equals to EK according to rule number 8. And if we define EN, the tangent EN as X, So here, EN is equal to X according to our definition. So from this equality, we will conclude that EK also equals to X. EK also equals to X. So we can write here that EK equals to also to X. So, in the next step, we will find out the length of line segment EB. EB equals, from the drawing, you can see that line segment EB equals to AB, AB minus AN minus NE. Okay? Again, EB equals to AB minus AN minus NE. EB equals to AB minus AN minus NE. Again, from the drawing you can see that line segment EB equals to AB minus AN minus NE. Okay, so EB equals to EB equals to AB. AB equals to four units because all the sides in of square ABCD are equal to each other and one side of square ABCD equals to four units. So EB also will be equal to four units minus AN. We have already found out that AN equals to one unit minus NE. NE equals to X according to our definition. So in conclusion, we found out that EB equals to 4 minus 1 minus X. 4 minus 1 is 3, so EB equals to 3 minus X. We found out that EB equals to 3 minus X. EB equals to 3 minus X. So we can write here that EB equals to 3 minus X. And we also know that all the angles inside the square are right angles. Therefore, this angle is a right angle because it is inside the square ABCD. So this is a right angle, it equals 90 degrees. And we also know that BC equals to 4 units because all the sides of square ABCD are equal to each other and we know that AD equals to 4 units, so all the other side will be also equal to 4 units. Therefore, BC also will be equal to 4 units. So, we will focus on the green right triangle, triangle CEB. 
So in the green right triangle, triangle CEB, according to the Pythagoras theorem, the square of the hypotenuse equals to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars. The hypotenuse in the green right angle triangle CEB is CE, therefore the square of the hypotenuse will be equal to CE square and according to the Pythagoras theorem the square of the hypotenuse equals to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars that is to say it equals to EB square plus BC square plus BC square I will repeat again, if you focus on the right green triangle, triangle CEB, according to the Pythagoras theorem, the square of the hypotenuse equals to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars, that is to say, CE square equals to EB square plus BC square. Okay, we have already found out that CE, CE equals to square root of 17 plus X. CE equals to square root of 17 plus x, if c equals to square root of 17 plus x, then c e square will be equal to square root of 17 plus x square, and it equals to e b square. e b equals to 3 minus x, so e b square will be equal to 3 minus x square, plus b c square. b c equals to 4 units, so b c square is 4 square. 4 square is 16, so in conclusion we found out that Square root of 17 plus x squared equals to 3 minus x squared plus 16. We will open the brackets on both sides of equation number 2 and we will get that square root of 17 plus x squared equals to 17 plus x squared plus 2 times square root of 17 times x and it equals to 3 minus x squared. 3 minus x squared equals to 3 squared is 9 plus x squared minus 6x plus 16. Here we have x squared on both sides of equation number 2, so x squared will get cancelled. In this side of equation number 2 we have 9 plus 16, 9 plus 16 is 25, 25 minus 6x equals to, according to equation number 2, equals to 17 plus 2 times square root of 17x. So here we will subtract 17 from this equation, equation number 2, and we will get 17 minus 17 is 0. Here we have 2 times square root of 17 x equals to 25 minus 17 is 8 minus 6x. So here we will divide this equation, equation number 2 by 2 and we will get that 2 over 2 is 1 so we have according to equation number 2, 2 over 2 is 1, here we have square root of 17x equals to 8 over 2 is 4 minus 6x over 2 is minus 3x So in conclusion, we found out that
square root of 17x equals to 4 minus 3x. We will add 3x to this equation, equation number 2, and we will get that square root of 17x plus 3x equals to 4. Here we will take a common factor of x from these expressions and we will get that so x is a common factor and what is left from square root of 17x after we took from it x as x as a common factor what is left it is actually square root of 17 and what is left from uh, 3x after we took from it x as a common factor what is left it is actually 3 and it equals to 4 so here we will divide this equation, equation number 2, by square root of 17 plus 3, and we will get that x equals to 4 over square root of 17 plus 3. Okay? So we found out the value of x. Here we will multiply x by square root of 17 minus 3, and then we will divide it by square root of 17 minus 3. So we will get the square root of 17 minus 3 over square root of 17 minus 3. When you multiply and then divide something by an expression, you didn't change anything. So, we actually found out that x equals to 4 times square root of 17 minus 3 over square root of 17 plus 3 times square root of 17 minus 3. We will calculate the value of the expression in the denominator according to a trigonometric identity that states that a plus b times a minus b equals to a square minus b square. Okay. A plus b times a minus b equals to a square minus b square. Here, in our specific expression, we know that a equals to square root of 17 and b equals to 3 so we know that a plus b times a minus b equals to a square minus b square so a square is square root of 17 square and square root of 17 square is 17 minus b square. b is 3, so b square is 9. So actually, we found out that the value of the expression in the numerator, that is square root of 17 plus 3 times square root of 17 minus 3, it is actually 17 minus 9. And we didn't touch at all at the numerator, so it will, it will remain as it was. That is to say, it will remain as 4 times square root of 17 minus 3. So, x equals to... So, actually, in conclusion, uh, we found out that that x we found out that x equals to 4 times square root of 17 minus 3 over 17 minus 9 and 17 minus 9 is 8 so I write it down according to equation number 2 
we found out that x equals to 4 times square root of 17 minus 3. 17 minus 9 is 8. So here we will divide this side of equation number 2, this side of equation number 2, by uh, the, we will divide the numerator by 4 and we will divide the denominator also by 4. 4 over 4 is 1, so 4 will get, will get cancelled, and 4, 8 over 4 is 2. Okay, so in conclusion we will get that x equals to square root of 17 minus 3 and 8, 8 over 4 is 2. So in conclusion we found out that x equals to square root of 17 minus 3 over 2 and what is the area of the green triangle, the area of the green right triangle, we will find the area of the green right triangle according to the formula for the area of any triangle, the area of any triangle equals to the base of the triangle times the i to the base over 2. Okay. This is the sign for the area of the triangle. The area of any triangle equals to the base of the triangle times the height to the base over 2. So, according to this formula, we will find out that the area of the green right triangle, triangle CBE, equals. I'll repeat again. This sign means the area of triangle CBE. The area of triangle CBE according to the formula that I showed you equals to the base of the triangle. The base of the triangle is EB times the height to the base. The height to the base is BC. The height must create 90 degrees with the base. And you can see that BC creates 90 degrees with the base EB. So the height is indeed BC, so the height is BC over 2. So the area of the right green triangle triangle CBE equals to EB times BC over 2. And so the area of the green right triangle triangle CBE according to Equation number 3 equals to EB. We have already found out that EB equals to 3 minus X times BC. BC equals to 4 units, so BC equals to 4 over 2. So we actually found out that the area of the green right triangle triangle CB equals to 3 minus X times 4 over 2. 4 over 2 is 2, so I write it down. So we actually found out that the area of the green right triangle, triangle CBE is equal to 2 times 3 minus x. Okay, the area of the green right triangle, triangle CBE equals to 2 times 3 minus x. But we have already found out the value of x according to equation number 2. x equals to square root of 17 minus 3 over 2. We have already found out that x equals to square root of 17 minus 3 over 2. This is according to equation number 2. So the value of x according to equation number 2 is equal to square root of 17 minus 3 over 2. Okay, so actually we will replace the value of x from this equation, equation number 2, inside 
this x in equation number three. Okay? And we will get that the area of the green right triangle, triangle CBE according to equation number three equals to two times three minus x and x equals to this expression according to equation number two so we will copy this expression we will substitute x by this expression that is to say it will be equal to square root of 17 minus 3 over 2 In conclusion, we found out that the area of the green triangle, triangle CBE, according to equation number 3, equals to 2 times 3 minus square root of 17 minus 3 over 2. Here we will multiply 3 by 2 and then we will divide it by 2 in order to have a common factor of this expression. And we will get that the area of the green right triangle, triangle CBE, according to equation number 3, equals to 2 times here, as I already told you, we will multiply 3 by 2, it is 6, and then we will divide it by 2, so actually it is 6 minus square root of 17 minus 3. So here we have 2 over 2 is 1, so 2 will get cancelled. And what is left from equation number 3 after we cancel 2? What is left? It is actually found out that the area of the right green triangle, triangle CBE, according to equation number 3, after we cancel 2, it equals to 6 minus square root of 17 minus 3. So here we will open the buckets of this equation, equation number 3, and we will get that the area of the green right triangle, triangle CBE according to equation number 3 is equal to 6 minus square root of 17 minus 3. Uh, minus, mi minus, minus 3 is plus 3, okay? Here we have minus, minus 3 is plus 3. So we actually found out that the area of the green right triangle triangle CBE according to equation number 3 equals to 6 plus 3 is 9 minus square root of 17 square units Or in terms of numbers, the area of the green right triangle, triangle CBE equals to 4.88 square units. So, I will repeat again. We actually found out that the area of the green right triangle, triangle CBE equals to either 9 minus square root of 17 square units or in terms of numbers the area of the green right triangle triangle CBE equals to 4.88 square units. I repeat again the area of this green right triangle triangle CBE equals to either 9 minus square root of 17 square units or in terms of numbers the area of this green Right triangle, triangle CBE equals to 4.88 square units. Okay, so now I will summarize the lecture. Actually, we wanted to find out the area of this green triangle, triangle CBE. We have here the square ABCD, square ABCD. 
we know that we know that one side of square ABCD equals to four units. Inside square ABCD we have a circle, the radius of this circle is one unit and we want to find out the area of this green triangle. So first of all, I presented to you rule number one. According to rule number one, a tangent to a circle is perpendicular to the radius drawn to its point of tangency. So what is the meaning of rule number one? The meaning of rule number one is that if we have this circle and tangent AB is tangent to this circle at point M, point M is the point of tangency, point M is the point of tangency of tangent AB with this circle. So if we have the radius OM, as you can see here, the radius OM it is drawn to the point of tendency. So whenever you have a radius that is drawn to the point of tendency, then the tangent will be perpendicular to this radius. That is to say tangent AB is perpendicular to this radius. This angle equals to 90 degrees and this angle also equals to 90 degrees. So a tangent to a circle that is to say AB, the tangent AB, is perpendicular to the radius drawn to its point of tendency. So whenever you have a radius that is drawn to the point of tendency, then the tangent will be uh, perpendicular to this radius. That is to say this angle equals to 90 degrees and this angle also equals to 90 degrees. Okay? And we implemented rule number one in our drawing. In our drawing we have this radius that is drawn to the point of tendency, that is to say it is drawn to point M, that is the point of tendency of tangent AD with this circle. Therefore, according to rule number one, the tangent AD will be perpendicular to this radius, that is, that is to say this angle will be equal to 90 degrees and this angle will be also equal to 90 degrees. And we have also the rule that the inside, uh, uh, all the angles inside the square are right angles, so this angle is inside square ABCD, therefore it is a right angle, it equals to 90 degrees. And we also have this radius that is drawn to the point of tendency, that is to say it is drawn to point N, that is the point of tendency of tangent AB with this circle, therefore the tangent AB will be perpendicular to this radius, that is to say this angle will be equal to 90 degrees and this angle will be also equal to 90 degrees. And we also have this radius that is drawn to the point of tendency, that is to say it is drawn to point K, that is a point of tendency of tangent CE with this circle. Therefore, according to rule number one, the tangent CE will be perpendicular to this radius. That is to say this angle will be equal to 90 degrees, degrees and this angle will be also equal to 90 degrees. Then I presented to you rule number two, according to rule number two, the sum of the angles in any quadrilateral is equal to 360 degrees. So we focused on quadrilateral MOAN, according to rule number two, the sum of its angles is equal to 360 degrees. Which angles quadrilateral MOAN has? It has three right angles, one, two, three. And the sum of three right angles is 270 degrees, plus the size of the fourth angle that is defined as angle X. The sum of those four angles must be equal to 360 degrees according to rule number two. That is to say, 270 degrees plus angle X must be equal to 360 degrees according to rule number two. We subtract 270 degrees from this equality and we got that angle X equals to 90 degrees. So we found out that this angle is a right angle. Therefore, actually, all angles inside, all the angles inside quadrilateral MOAN are right angles. And then I presented to you rule number three. According to rule number three, if, if a quadrilateral has four right angles, then it must be at least a rectangle, if not a square. And we found out that quadrilateral MOAN has four right angles. Therefore, according to rule number three, it must be a square. So we will relate to quadrilateral MOAN as a square. Okay? 
we will relate to quadrilateral M O A N as a rectangle. According to rule number three, if a quadrilateral has four right angles, it must be at least a rectangle, so we will relate to quadrilateral M O A N as a rectangle. According to rule number three. And we also have rule number four that states that the opposite sides of a rectangle are equal to each other. We will implement rule number four in quadrilateral M O A N or on rectangle M O A N. M O A N is a rectangle according to rule number three. So in rectangle M O A N, we know that M O equals to A N according to rule number four. M O equals to A N according to rule number four. But we have we know that M O equals to one unit. It is given us the question. So from this equality, we will conclude that A N equals to one unit. Also, A N equals to one unit. Likewise, according to rule number four, M A equals to O N. M A equals to O N. But we have already found out that O N equals to one unit. So from this equality, we will conclude that AM also equals to one unit. AM also equals to one unit. So we actually found out that all four sides of quadrilateral MOAN, they are all equal to each other. They are all equal to one unit. And we also found out that uh, all angles inside MOAN are right angles. And I presented to you then uh, rule number five. According to rule number five, if a quadrilateral has four right angles and four equal sides, then it is a square. And found out that we already found out that quadrilateral M O A N has four equal sides and four right angles. Therefore, quadrilateral M O A N is a square according to rule number five. Quadrilateral M O A N is a square according to rule number five because it has four equal sides and four equal angles. So we will relate to, to quadrilateral MOAN as a square. And we have also rule number six, according to rule number six, the diagonal of a square bisects the angles of the square into 45 degrees angles. So if we relate to square MOAN, then according to rule number six, the diagonal OA bisects this angle that is a right angle into two angles that each of them is equal to 45 degrees. So this angle equals to 45 degrees and this angle also equals to 45 degrees. That is to say, angle OAB equals to 45 degrees. <coughs> according to rule number six, angle OAB equals to 45 degrees according to rule number six. Likewise, if we focus on square ABCD, then according to rule number six, According to rule number six, the diagonal CA bisects the same angle into two angles of, of 45 degrees each of them. So angle CAB equals to 45 degrees also according to rule number six. Angle CAB equals to 45 degrees according to rule number six. So those two angles are both equal to 45 degrees, therefore they are equal to each other. That is to say angle OAB equals to angle CAB. And from the fact that angle OAB equals to angle CAB, we will conclude that the diagonal CA passes for point O. Okay? The diagonal CA of square ABCD passes for point O. Otherwise, if we assume that the diagonal CA doesn't pass for point O, then angle CAB will never be equal to angle OAB. But because of the fact that angle CAB equals to angle OAB, we will conclude that the diagonal CA passes through point O. Okay, then I present to you rule number seven. According to rule number seven, the length of a, a diagonal of a square is equal to square root of two multiplied by the length of the square's sides. So what is the meaning of rule number Seven, the meaning of rule number seven is that if we have square ABCD and we know that one side of square ABCD equals to S units, then the length of its diagonal BC or AD will be equal to square root of two times S units. Okay, and then we implemented rule number seven in our drawing. In our drawing, we have the 
square m o a n so the diagonal of square m o a n that is o a will be equal to square root of two times the length of one side that is one that is to say the uh, length of diagonal o a will be, will be equal to one times square root of two that is to say it will be equal to square root of two units o a equals to square root of two units according to rule number seven likewise we focused on square a b c d and on square a b c d the length of diagonal c a will be equal to the length of one side of square a b c d that is actually four units times square root of two the length of diagonal c a will be equal to the length of one side that is actually four units times square root of two that is to say c a equal to four times square root of two units according to rule number seven then we found out the value of the length of c o c o equals to c a minus o a c o equals to c a minus o a we have already found out that c a equals to four times square root of two units and o a equals to one times square root of two units four times minus four times square root of two units minus one times square root of two units it is equal to three times square root of two units so we found out that c o equals to three times square root of two units then we focused on the blue right triangle, triangle C OK. We implemented the Pythagoras theorem in this right, square, uh, right uh, blue triangle. The square of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars. That is to say, C O square equals to O K square plus C K square. C O equals to three times square root of two. So C O square will be equal to three times square root of two square, and it equals to O K square. O K equals to one. So O K square will be equal to one square. One square is one plus C K square. Three times square root of two square is nine times two, equals to one plus C K square. Nine times two is eighteen. Eighteen equals to one plus C K square. We subtracted one from this equation. Equation number one. Eighteen minus one is seventeen. We found out that seventeen equals to C K square. We took a root out of equation number one and we found out that ck equals to the square root of uh, 17. ck equals to the square root of 17. So here ck equals to square root of 17. Then I presented to you the last rule, rule number eight. According to rule number eight, the lengths of two tangents from a common external point to a circle are equal. So what is the meaning of rule number 8? The meaning of rule number 8 is if we have this circle and we have the external point, point P and from the external point P we will draw two tangents to this circle then the lengths of two, two, those, those two tangents will be equal to each other that is to say PA will be equal to PB according to rule number 8. We implemented rule number 8 in our drawing we have now we're drawing the external point, point E. From this external point, we have two tangents to this circle, tangent EA, tangent EN, and tangent EK. And according to rule number eight, EN equals to EK. EN equals to EK, according to rule number eight, we defined EN as X. EN equals to X. From this equality, we will get that EK also equals to X. So EK also equals to X. Then we found out the uh, value of line segment EB, EB, from this moment you can see that EB equals to AB minus AN minus NE. EB equals to AB minus AN minus NE. So EB equals to AB is 4, NA is 1, and in AN is 1, and NE is X. So in conclusion, we found out that EB equals to 4 minus 1 minus X. 4 minus 1 is 3. So EB in conclusion is equal to 3 minus X. So EB equals to 3 minus X. BC equals to 4 units. And CE equals to square root of 17 plus X. We implement and we know that the green triangle is a right triangle because this angle is one out of four angles of square ABCD. And we know that all the angles inside the square are right angles, therefore this angle is a right angle, that is to say it equals to 90 degrees, therefore triangle CBE is a right triangle. And we implemented the Pythagoras theorem and the right angle, triangle CBE or CEB, 
the square of the hypotenuse equals to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars, that is to say c e square equals to b e square plus b c square, c e equals to square root of 17 plus x, so c e square will be equal to square root of 17 plus x square, b e equals to 3 minus x, so b e square will be equal to 3 minus x square, b c equals to 4 minus, so b c square is 4 square, 4 square is 16. We open the brackets on both sides of equation number 2 and we got that square root of 17 plus x squared equals to 17 plus x squared plus 2 times square root of 17x and it equals to 3 minus x squared. 3 minus x squared equals to 9 plus x squared plus uh, minus 6x plus 16. We have x squared on both sides of equation number 2 so x squared will get cancelled. 9 plus 16 is 25, so in conclusion we found out that 17 plus 2 times square root of 17x equals to 25 minus x. We subtracted 17 from this equation, equation number 2, and we got that uh, 17 minus 17 is 0, so in this side of equation number 2, what is left is only 2 times square root of 17x, and the other side, 25 minus 17 is 8, so what is left in the other side is 8 minus 6x. We divided this equation, equation number 2, by 2, and uh, we got that uh, square root of 17x equals to 8 over 2 is 4, and minus 6 over 2 is minus 3x, so in conclusion we found out the square root of 17x equals to 4 minus 3x. We added 3x to this equation, equation number 2, and we found out that square root of 17x plus 3x equals to 4. We took a common factor x from this equation, equation number 2, and we got that x times square root of 17 plus 3 equals to 4. We divided this equation by square root of 17 plus 3, and we got that x equals to 4 over square root of 17 plus 3. We multiplied this side of equation number 2 by square root of 17, 17 minus 3 and then we divide it by square root of 17 minus 3 we got this expression so the value of the denominator we found it according to the uh, algebraic identity that a plus b times a minus b equals to a square minus b square here in our uh, expression a equals to square root of 17 and b equals to 3 so a square is square root of 17 squared, it equals to 17, and b squared is 3 squared. 3 squared is 9. So in conclusion, we found out that the, in the denominator, we have on, left only with 17 minus 9, and uh, the numerator didn't change, it remains 4 times square root of uh, 17 minus 3, over 17 minus 9 equals to x. 17 minus 9 is 8, so in conclusion, we found out that x equals to 4 times square root of 17 minus 3 over 8. We divided uh, this side of equation number 2 by 4. 4 over 4 is 1 and 8 over 4 is 2. So in conclusion, we found out that x equals to square root of 17 minus 3 over 2. And the general formula for the area of any triangle is the base times the height over 2 equals to the area of the triangle. We Mark calculated the value of the area of the green right triangle, triangle CBE, according to the formula that I presented to you. So, so the area of the green right triangle, triangle CBE, equals to the base of the triangle that is actually EB, times the height to the base that is BC. So EB times BC over 2. EB equals to 3 minus X. BC equals to 4 units. So in conclusion, we saw, found out that the area of the green right triangle, triangle CBE equals to 3 minus x times 4 over 2. 4 over 2 is 2. So in conclusion, we found out that the area of the green right triangle, triangle CBE equals to 2 times code, uh, it equals to 2 times 3 minus x. And we have already found out the value of x in equation number 2, x equals to square root of 17 minus 3 over 2. So we will place the value of x from equation number 2 inside x from equation number 3. We did it and we got that the area of the green right triangle triangle CBE equals to 2 times uh, 3 minus square root of 17 minus 3 over 2. We multiplied 3 by 2 and then we divided by 2 in order to have a common factor with this expression. We got this expression. 
we divided 2 over 2 is 1, so 2 will get cancelled. And we got that the area of the green right triangle, triangle CBE equals to 6 minus square root of 17 minus 3. We opened the brackets in this equation, equation number 2, and we found out that the area of the green right triangle, triangle CBE equals to 6 minus square root of 17. Minus minus 3 is plus 3. So in conclusion, we found out that the area of the green right triangle, triangle CBE equals to 6 minus square root of 17 plus 3. 6 plus 3 is 9. So in conclusion, we found out that the area of the green right triangle, triangle CBE equals to 9 minus square root of 17 square units. Or in terms of numbers, the area of the green right triangle, triangle CBE equals to 4.88 units. I'll repeat again, the area of this green right triangle, triangle CBE equals to 9 equals to either 9 minus square root of 17 square units, or in terms of numbers, the area of this green right triangle, triangle CBE equals to 4.88 square units. Okay, thank you very much.